Morning, y'all. God, I want to get you guys excited. I'm sitting here looking at y'all <clears throat> while Sharon's talking, and I'm like, are you, have you got it yet? Are you, are you kind of absorbing everything she said? That was a lot of meat of it. I think a lot of uh, people are thinking, you know, you're going to learn a whole lot about the PDN, kind of what IPD is all about. Um, she gave you a good snapshot of it. But what we're really going to try to do today is really bring you guys together as a team. This is one team, right? You guys are all part of a team. You're going to be working together. You're going to be collaborating a lot more uh, than you probably used to. You're used to working specifically in your one area, in your one little discipline. But now you guys are going to be working really together as one group. So that's what we want to do today is really talk about uh, how you guys are going to function together as a project team. I think that's the biggest thing that we want to have takeaways from today. Obviously, if there's stuff concerning um, IPD, the PDN, we're always here to, to answer those questions as well. But one of the first things I want to talk about this morning uh, is a matrix organization. We've been talking a whole lot about IPD and EPIC and how we are, as a department, switching to a matrix type organization. A lot of people are like, what is that? How does that really affect us and how we're doing business right now? Okay. Well, you know, project teams work really well in a matrix type organization. Okay. A matrix type uh, organization provides flexibility really in managing your workloads, understanding what those priorities are in a project. Okay. And, and what you see right here is a matrix. Okay. This is specifically one, let's say for a project manager such as Mike, for instance, um, what you're going to see, he's going to have multiple projects. Okay. Whoever is assigned to be a PM on a project, they're not just going to have one project. They're going to have multiple projects that they're going to be over. Okay. And as you can see, there's going to be a lot of different disciplines included in that project team, right? And as you can see, going across the top there in blue, you got all your different type disciplines. And going down here in the red, in the um, I guess the y-axis is your project managers. They got multiple projects there. Well, what you're going to have, you got two different people down here. You got design lead and technical leads. Okay, a design lead, which is established right here in the star, a design lead is going to be somebody that really is going to be the one managing, kind of overseeing all of the des uh, disciplines, designs, plans, specifications, the estimates, really bringing all that together, reviewing those and submitting those in to the PM. Okay, whoever the design lead is on the project team is going to be like that right hand man. So keep that in mind, whoever that's established. The technical lead, okay, are just going to be that person in those discipl other disciplines that are going to provide those, the expertise, okay, the knowledge in that specific discipline, that's what they're going to be providing. So given an example right here on project one and project three, you'll notice the design lead really is coming out of the roadway discipline. So that's probably a project that they've been given that's probably like a roadway widening project, maybe an intersection type project, something that's really focused on the roadway side. So they're going to be the lead. They're going to be the one that's really going to be working with all the other disciplines to get things together, uh, working right there with the PM. You can see on projects one and three, everybody else is just the, the little circle dot there, the technical leads. They're just there to provide their information, their expertise, and their discipline. Unlike project two, so project two, let's say Mike's got a project, it's really structures based. It's really focused around possibly a bridge replacement, something that is really what we're doing on this project. Yeah, we've got other aspects as far as the roadway that's included, but the design lead person that's going to come out of the structures division for that project. So that's the one, that person is really going to be working hand in hand with that PM. They're the one that's going to be responsible. Just as the same, the technical leads are going to be still providing all of their expertise, all of their uh, information, kind of filtering that into the design lead, and they're going to be working with that PM. Okay, So that's really a project manager, what their responsibilities and how they're going to work with the team. And then you've got your design leads and your technical leads. And that'll be established. I don't know necessarily if Mike's established it yet. For this team, I'm, I'm sure you guys will discuss that at some point. But moving forward, you think about this matrix and as a whole in the department, like every time you're assigned to a team. Like, what is your role? Okay? You kind of know. Are you a star or are you a little dot? Okay? <clears throat> we also have programs. 
You know, I, I, that was one of the first questions I had coming into to project management is I hear a lot about, you know, a project manager, then I hear program managers. I'm like, what's the difference in a project manager and a program manager? That was one of the first things they had to, you know, clarify for me because I was like, I'm not really getting the difference. Well, the difference is, you know, the department's got a lot of projects. Those are the big legislative projects, okay? Then we have a whole lot more programs. I realize, I feel like we have more programs, more projects that go out in a program than we do necessarily on the the legislative projects. Those programs are going to come out of the different areas such as resurfacing. We do a lot of resurfacing, right? Um, we also have safety and traffic. We have our SIA program, our state industrial access, and our local programs. So a lot of that, a lot of our, our funding, our budget really comes out of those different programs that we put out each year. So a program manager is going to act very similar to a project manager in, the, in, a, in a team's base. They're still going to have uh, a lot of uh, collaboration with this team. They're still going to have a team. You're thinking, a resurfacing project, how big is the team going to be for a little resurfacing project, right? There's still going to be a team. It may not be 26 people, but there's still going to be a team for uh, some of these smaller type projects, okay, on the program level. So you can see here a program manager They've got, I've got four different programs listed right here going down uh, in red. So he's got a resurfacing program, SIA program, safety and bridge, I've mentioned those. Similar, the design lead and technical lead. So if I have a resurfacing project, who do you think the design lead is going to be? Where is that going to come from? That's obviously going to come from, you see that star up the very top right there, that star is going to come from the pavement section. So probably your pavement designer, okay, pavement management they're going to be the design lead uh, in that situation. Similar SIA, your SIA projects, those are sometimes a little bit more concentrated, smaller projects, a lot of intersections. You're dealing with the, you know, some type of company generally. You're trying to provide them access or whatnot. So that design lead is going to come out of the roadway section. Safety, so safety, you're generally dealing with some kind of miscellaneous safety project, your traffic. That's going to come out of the traffic division. That's going to be the lead. Okay, and similar to the bridge out of the structures. Is that making sense to you guys? So we're going to have leads, design leads, and then technical leads. The design lead is really going to be the one that's going to bring everything together for the project, working for, what did I say? The design, the plans, the specs, the estimate, and working together to get those reviewed and working with that PM hand in hand. Okay, so program manager and project managers, that's what we're going to have moving forward. Questions on those? Pretty clear? So project managers. So right now for this project, Mike's the project manager. Moving forward, we're going to have a lot of project managers. Okay, It's not necessarily going to be Mike. He's going to have uh, project managers underneath him in each of the regions. We're going to have project managers. We're going to have program managers in each of the regions. What is that key role and responsibilities, though, going to be for that project manager? Right now it seems like they got a lot of responsibility, right? They do, um, but they're going to be working just as this uh, little illustration shows right in the center with all of you guys. They are not on an island by themselves. The project manager, you can see all of these different colors. Um, they're all the different disciplines. You guys are all going to be working as one team to get this project moved forward to meet that PCD document, project commitment document. You'll hear that many times moving forward. That's what you're really shooting for in the end is to meet all of the, the goals that you set out in that PCD document. So the first thing, so the PM is going to develop and lead the project team. So you guys had a kickoff meeting already uh, to basically discuss the project, introduce you guys. Uh, you're going to get acclimated. I would imagine right now you all haven't had a whole lot of interaction, right? Talking to each other, really working in a team setting. But moving forward, you're going to have to, okay? That's why we're having this, um, this training. The project manager is going to ensure project has the appropriate level of support and resources. That's very important as a project manager to make sure that you as a discipline, you are able to meet uh, those schedules um, that are set in the very beginning. And if you can't, for whatever reason, you feel like you don't necessarily have um, the people, the resources to do that, you have to let that PM know immediately in the beginning, hey, we don't have the people uh, right now to put on this project, so we don't have that support and resources, we're going to have to consult that out. 
And you have to be upfront. You have to be real with yourself, real with your team um, to say, hey, I'm not going to have the time or the resources. And he will take care of that. He or she will take care of that and get that consulted out um, if need be. It's going to assure the planning, coordinating, monitoring, controlling of the project. So he, that person is going to, the PM is going to be that direct line of communication for the project. Okay? They are responsible for making sure that everything stays within that scope, what was defined, the budget, as well as the schedule. I feel like currently we've kind of, this, we've had a lot of scope creep potentially in a lot of our projects. I know our budget has just been not even thought of at some point. You know, we try to think about budget, but it's not really focused on as much as it is moving forward. And then our schedule. How many times are we pushing the letting? Oh, we're not making this letting. We've got to push it again. Oh, well, something happened. We're going to push it another letting, right? I, I know that happens. We, we, I've, I've seen it, right? So this PM is really going to make sure, and they're going to make sure that all that planning and coordination of the project is... Uh, it, that it's wrapped up, we're still on schedule and so forth, moving forward with it. Single point of contact for project issues. So moving forward, the PM is going to be that person you're going to call. Hey, if there's a conflict, you realize that there's an issue with the project that, you know, I need to tell them about, okay? And normally, I'm going to go tell my supervisor, I'm going to tell my manager, and maybe in a couple weeks, it'll finally get to, you know, somebody that needs to know about it. But it's very important at any time, don't wait till you're in a group meeting, you know, in a project team meeting. Tell them immediately if you find out there's any issues or any conflicts. Or even if you think, hey, there's something that comes up that may affect another discipline. Okay? You've got to tell the PM immediately about any of those issues moving forward. Because that could make or break that PCD document, that schedule, the budget, whatever it is. Works with consultants and project teams with assignments and reviews. So again, consultants are going to be on our teams. Okay, it's not just going to be with TDOT folks. There will be consultants. They're still part of the team. PM's going to work with them uh, on assignments and reviews as well. It's going to have to make timely decisions. Okay, I think that is something important uh, to keep in, in mind is that the PM's going to have to look at the risk, really kind of consider risk consider budget and so forth, then he's going to have to make some decisions, okay? They're going to have to make some decisions one way or the other, um, some hard decisions sometimes. So that PM role really has a lot on them, and like I said, risk management there. So, but they're not out there, like I said, I don't want you to think like, hey, so much is on the PM, because you guys are there to support that PM and that PM's role, because it's just as much of you as it is that PM to get this project to meet success. So why do you think, okay, I'm going to be interactive with you guys. Every time I'm standing up here, I'm going to expect somebody to talk to me. <laughs> so why do you guys think that, uh, you know, project teams are important? Like, do you feel like it's important? Or like, okay, the department's just going to something new. Here we go again. You know, I mean, do you see some benefit in it? I mean, talk to me. Somebody tell me, like, I feel like I can see benefit in teams. Okay, if I would rather... Um, you know, be given a project, Jamie, go sit in a corner and go work on this project for three months by yourself, or, hey, I'm going to have a couple of people, Heather, Michelle, I'm going to have Robert over here, we're all going to sit here and we're going to think about this and we're going to work on it. I personally would rather have everybody together, brainstorm, because I know that four heads are better than one, no matter what you say, you know. What do you guys think? Y'all agree? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you really do. Um, and you don't realize it. And I hate, you know, I, I feel like the silos really uh, or more so in maybe headquarters than the regions. The regions really try to work together. They're having to bounce stuff off of each other all the time in a regional setting. Headquarters, I've always been headquarters, so nothing against headquarters. That's been me. We, we are doing our thing, you know, for everybody, <laughs> right? What else? Anybody else? Yes. And then I make another decision. And I, where's my permit rider? Right. Or, right. Uh, yeah, I just like to put torpedoes in water. That's <laughs> right. Just dropping yeah. bombs everywhere. Make sure everybody feels it, Robert. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So it's not just you. Make sure it affects all of you. You know, one one conflict, one problem, 
you know, it, it's really affecting all of you as a team. Because when you go out and you, this, this project is, is, you know, complete and, and it's at construction, that first truck's out there and we're finally getting done and we can, you know, finally close this project out, you guys can say y'all were a part of it, each one of you, right? Your name's going to be on that PCD, you're a part of it. Yeah. So, teamwork, key to project communication, acceleration, innovation, efficiency. I think th those are the four things that you will keep hearing Sharon and I emphasize throughout uh, the rest of this morning, is that in project teams, this one, it's so key to have good communication uh, so that we can accelerate. Why is it important to accelerate? We don't want to go so fast that it, it affects quality, but what is acceleration? What do I mean by that? Yeah, we want to keep moving forward. That's right. We don't want to get a stall because if we stall, what's going to happen? We're not going to meet that letting, are we? We've got to keep moving forward, and that PM is the one that's really going to make sure we're constantly moving forward. Innovation. Do you feel like we've had a lot of innovation in our uh, projects? We can be honest. Heather and Brian don't speak. No. <laughs> Somewhat. I mean, you know, I, I really feel like a lot of the innovation has been taken out um, for, the, for everybody else. Not somebody, so, so Brian and Heather from Benish, they've been one, let's do a lot of thinking, let's do a lot of, you know, uh, being creative. But for everybody else, they just work on their little piece and they're not really having to be a part of the whole design concept, right? So now getting everybody together, they can be more innovative, more creative, and Sharon's going to talk about that later on. And then efficiency, overall efficiency, because we're going to be doing some things simultaneously. Sharon mentioned earlier, instead of doing tip to tail, we can't do this before we do the next step and the next task. We're really going to be working simultaneously. All of you guys are going to have your parts. You're going to be working together. You're going to be thinking. Maybe your part may not come until a little bit later. I don't know. Um, but you're, you need to be thinking about what the team's doing. You know, what were those decisions made and how is it going to affect your specific discipline? So, like I said, current practices often lead to uh, work in discipline silos. You know, we don't want to do that. Obviously, we've talked about that. We want to work together. Uh, teamwork provides opportunities for collaboration and continual communication. Okay? You guys, I, I introduced yourself earlier uh, just because I, I see a lot of faces. I don't know everybody's name. But I want you guys to know each other. I want you guys to get to, to be able to talk, call somebody up, bounce some stuff off of each other. Always communicate with your PM but uh, continual communication. Allows for different disciplines to work simultaneously. I talked about that. Y'all are uh, going to be working on some stuff at the same time. Be better manage scope, schedule, budget, risk, and quality. So overall, that is what IPD is about. Okay? That's what IPD is about. That is why we are changing the way we're doing business here in TDOT and with EPIC. It really starts with IPD and how we deliver projects deliver the overall program. In our current way that we've been doing it for years, we're not able to be as efficient as we have, so we're going to have to kind of move things around, okay? And that's why we have EPIC. So scope, schedule, budget, risk, quality. Those are the things keep it in mind in every team because you're going to be a part of multiple project teams. You're not just this one. I know you guys are already a part of a couple of different teams. So allow for opportunities to learn from each other, much more enjoyable, and you see the value. Um, I, I can see that learning from others is very important, okay? Um, I come into this section, project management, to learn more about the pre-construction side. I know a little bit about pre-construction, but I know a whole lot about the time you guys turn it in and let it go. That's what I know, right? So it gives a lot of people opportunities to kind of cross-train, learn about the other disciplines. PDN key principles, take advantage of the power of a project team to guarantee project delivery success. Very important. You stay together as a team, you will be successful. Project team dynamics. So key concepts we're going to touch on. Innovation, being creative. You are just going to have that general layout, as Sharon mentioned. It's up to you as the project team to really take it from there. Decision making at the team level. You guys are going to be the ones making the decisions. How many times do you guys get in a meeting and you sit there and you don't say anything and you just listen and then you're taking I know this is gonna be terrible later on I'm gonna go tell my supervisor and then I'll tell the director and they can we can figure this out no this is really 
for you guys to decide on. You, you talk about it in the team, and you make the decisions in the team. You guys are empowered as part of the, the project team members to make those decisions and not necessarily elevate that up. You may bounce it off of them, but the final decision comes in here as the project team. Perform work to standards within scope, schedule, budget. Communicate openly with team members. Being proactive and supportive. Don't wait till something falls apart, right? Don't wait until you have an issue. Try to be proactive, think about things ahead of time, and be supportive of each other. And we will talk about the whole being supportive, um, you know, so that we're respectful as a team here in a little bit later on. And then overall enhancing project quality. <clears throat> it's very important we want to stay, um, stay on schedule, but we do not want it to affect overall project quality whatsoever, okay? We want to make sure that we have stayed within our scope, stayed, stayed within the budget, and ultimately that schedule, but we don't want it to be a detriment to the quality of the project, and then it gets out to construction and we have a whole lot of change orders. We want to vet all of that out in the project team here so that when we go, you get it turned in, it gets let to construction, we have minimized those number of change orders. That would be huge, right? That would be so great if we could really minimize the change orders. Because right now, the thought is we're trying to meet a turn-in date, whatever we got to do to get it turned in, and then pass the construction, they'll figure it out. And then we got change order, change order, change order, right? No, let's really think about this. We got, you know, about 20 people in here right now. Project team's going to be a little over, you know, 23 people or so. It's a lot of minds, a lot of brains. Let's make sure that we can vet everything out, think about everything, do our homework, and put a good quality project out there for construction. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. At the end of each one of these, you'll see that I've included some sort of little quote, nugget for you guys to think about to kind of wrap up the section. And for this one, it's really talking about team dynamics. Trust what you can achieve together will far outweigh what you're capable of individually. Do you guys agree with that? I know you guys haven't been to Epic other than Michelle over here. Nobody else has been to the Epic Academy. Me and Sharon have been, Michelle's been. We know what a fun time it is in Epic Academy. And one thing you learn is a lot of team building uh, and a lot of different little fun facts. What, are they, what do they call them? Wisdoms. wisdoms of the day. That's exactly right. You learn wisdoms of the day. And this is one I think taken away, a big takeaway from this section. And it's for anything, not necessarily do at work, but this is anything in life I agree with. Um, so trust what you're capable of together will far outweigh what you're capable of individually. Think about that. <clears throat>